of Woodbridge and Hedgeley contains four reoccurring female characters with which the author pays tribute to Jane Austen, her many fanciful characters, and her depiction of the role of women in upper-class Regency society. Two of the novel's characters, Harriet Moore, a 25-year-old upper-class woman who keeps a romantic role throughout, and a nameless middling girl of 10 years of age, who appears mostly in the first and last episodes, enjoy a more progressive attitude inspired by the likes of Elizabeth Bennet and perhaps Austen herself. They are both very curious and observant creatures that like to roam about their small towns unchaperoned, secondary to these qualities, perhaps to the slight social detriment of their families. The younger of the two has not fully caught on to the restricted roles their society has cut out for them, and aspires to some scientific or engineering career upon adulthood after watching Mr. Winter's glass house being constructed. Their education thus far has had to do with the arithmetic of money and the reading of books on how to cook and manage a household. Harriet, on the other hand, is well aware of what is expected of her, but in some cases is set on testing the social fence, such as her walking about the towns unaccompanied. And in others, she is entirely indifferent, such as the taking of a very familiar approach to conversation with Mr. Winter upon their first encounter that allows her such, in which they talk about the philosophy of morality and the church's role in it. But tis true, tis true, saints for the hour and sinners for the rest of the week, Harriet Moore jests regarding her church's following as she tugs upon the brim of her cousin's bonnet in chapter two, whilst the two of them walk to Hedgeley with Mr. Winter. She then goes on, later in the conversation, after teasing Mr. Winter to state, alas, Mr. Winter, on an incidental note, a man may not be so easily defined by the sum of his virtues and follies over a limited piece of time, for he may in his youth make himself drunk nightly, gamble away all that he earns, and from time to time shoot another man's woodcock and buzzards to nourish his wickedness. And then upon marriage, or plain old aging, he may settle down into a quieter attitude. At that point, we see him come to church weekly, which doesn't necessarily make him a better man, but the act itself is a symptom of the desire to be. Then we have, in contrast, two other women who seem to luxuriate in their sex's social rules, a Mrs. Edwards and Harriet's cousin Charlotte. Mrs. Edwards is the local particular Baptist preacher's wife, who is steeped in orthodoxy and a sense of superiority, much the same to Lady Catherine de Burgh in Pride and Prejudice, though she always delivers her staunch opinions rather loud and crassly, as if she had a bit of Mrs. Bennet in her from the selfsame novel. When a man asks for a woman's opinion, asserts Mrs. Edwards in chapter two of the novel, they do not wish to hear it, but for her to be given a chance to agree with him quite enthusiastically, we must always agree most enthusiastically with the greater sex, for they are kind enough to die for us and our country in war, and sometimes on the gentleman's field, though you will not hear me delighting in the latter. Charlotte Moore is more the like to Eleanor Dashwood from Sense and Sensibility. She is the more sensible of the two cousins, at least in the front of the novel. She hides her feelings and desires with regard to love up until a point of tragedy later on in the story. I'm afraid my thoughts are rather dull, Mr. Winter, she says when asked for her opinion on the concept of morality being a function of the church's instruction. For you see, I do not dare so far as my cousin. I'm of the opinion that ladies needn't worry over such things, that mastering the pianoforte, the French language, and the capturing of most aspects of life by way of paint and canvas are more than enough to satiate the female mind and I'm perfectly content with the tradition that morality be taught and taught again every Sunday, whether or not it need be so. She does, however, exhibit her intelligence and sexuality through her very practiced singing voice on a couple of occasions in the novel, as were she Jane Fairfax from Emma. And there we have it, the women of Woodbridge and Hedgeley and their comparisons to Jane Austen and her particular characters inside her novels.